We are here with Metalworks.com's featured artist for the month of October 2012, Eric Hanlon. I mean, Blackmore, but we're talking with Eric. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, man. It's good to, good to be here. Good to have you here, actually. Right on. Yeah, we are in the humble abode of Eric's yeah. place right now. So, Welcome, everybody. It's fun to be here. Uh, I hope you enjoy the stay. I'm glad you can't experience the smell. <laughs> It's really not that bad. All right, so I'm not going to ask you any, like, you know, small talk questions. We're going to get right down to the meat of the bones, and that is Black Moore's second album, Lethal Waters, right there. Dose. Okay, so you guys just released this. How long did it take for the writing process for this album? Well, I mean, we did the first album about four years ago. So Off and on since then? Yeah, yeah, off and on since then. I mean, a lot of it was written... Uh, when we still had two former members, Nick Jones and Sylvain Coderre in the band. Uh, a lot of writing was done with them, uh, but uh, I'd, I'd say probably 60% was done with them and the rest. But yeah, it was probably about three years to write this one. And it, it wasn't sit down and we're going to write this whole thing, right? Like it was just sort of over time it came together. But now that now that we're firing on all cylinders the way that we are right now, it's going to be a lot more a lot more productive coming out a lot sooner <laughs> right on uh okay so you actually guys actually or that's the way i understand it you credited pretty much all the songwriting with nick is that fair or a lot of it it was yeah it was a lot of it a lot of the songs like uh if he didn't come up with like a main riff or something like that then we would have sat down with him and this was when he was still in the band and been like you know we got this and this what should we do here and he'd be like well let's do that you know, let's like go into this and like do this kind of shit or, you know, like this, the complete opposite. Like he'd have a riff and then we'd come up with this. And then when he decided to leave, he was weird. Like, you know, is it cool if we use your songs? And he was like, do you please do? But, you know, give me the credit. And we did. And it's super cool that we were able to use such wicked music that he wrote with us. It's super cool. Awesome. Uh, well, the album does sound great. Um, who did you work with for uh, uh, like who was your producer? Uh, for production, it was Rob, who's our bass player, and uh, Andrew Wiseman, who mixed the first one. And he's been a force in it since, yeah, he engineered our first album, which was, you know, we love the sound of it. And yeah, he's just, he's a, a monstrously informed musician, which is really cool to work with someone like that, who has such a great feel for how things do sound, how they should sound. And yeah, like when we could give him an idea and he would be able to run with it and nurture it and help us fulfill what we wanted to do. It was really cool working with him. So Andrew Wiseman was uh, probably our biggest collaborator on it for sure. Right on. And you guys were pretty comfortable with working with him since you worked with him before? Definitely. And I mean, I've known Andrew since I was uh, 12 years old. So... Yeah, we've always had a good rapport, me and him, and yeah, he's just always been up here with the music. Uh, when we we do with the hands, he gets the brain onto it, and it works really well. Right on. Um, and you mentioned that Rob did some producing, so you guys recorded, what was it, just the guitars on your own? Yeah, we. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we recorded every guitar track sitting on his bed in his parents' basement. Uh, everything we... Uh, uh, but yeah, I played it pretty much just straight into his computer and then reamped everything out of our amps and like that. But I mean, like it, as far as getting a clean guitar sound and everything like that, like we were able to, you know, fix every little thing that we were like, ah, it's a little shitty sound and we could fix it. And we got it, we got to do all the, the little housekeeping bits on it, which was really cool. It was a cool way to do guitars like that. I and mean, you know, you just got to hang out, have a glass of scotch with Rob and, not being dinged a hundred bucks an hour. Or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was that was a man, that was a huge factor in because I mean we did the drums over three days at uh, Coda Pop Studios, and that was you know it was it was great. Like the studio is fantastic. It's really really cool there, but it cost a lot of money. So to be able to get half the same vibe but not have to pay through the nose the whole time was really awesome. Yeah, and then when you're planning on trying to tour afterwards you know you gotta think ahead that way for money and stuff like that so. exactly yeah i mean you don't want to completely blow your entire budget on the album which well 
you go into debt for it for sure. But yeah, you want to be able to fiscally go on tour and promote what you've made. Like you don't want to blow like absolutely everything on not going out and showing people what you have made. You know what I mean? Um, now, as far as like a couple of the individual songs from the record, uh, Hatred's Maze is a part two of the Blood Moor. Yeah. And um, was that something that you wanted to do for a while or did it just kind of go in that direction? You thought, hey, I could do this. That was, yeah, well, that was totally, uh, Evan wrote the song and I remember when he was first starting to write it, uh, he was like, yeah, man, I totally, you know, jacked a couple of riffs out of the Blood Moor. And just, you know, which we had jacked out of the soundtrack from Diablo 2. <laughs> just, you know, this really like, dang, 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 like, totally stole the riffs from it. And he was like, yeah, man, I totally quoted that in this song. And I was like, well, then the subject matter for the lyrics has got to be the same yeah. as what it was. And then he wrote it, and it was, you know, it works so well. And I was like, well, this has got to be the Blood More Part 2 then. <clears throat> Or actually, more accurately, it would be the Bloodmore Part Three. Really? Because the Bloodmore deals with the first act of the game, and Hatred's Maze deals with the third act. So we're gonna have to do Part Actual Two, which would <laughs> deal with the second act in the desert city of Luke Lane. But you know, we'll get to that when we get to it. Oh, but yeah. yeah, right on. So so that's uh, coming up on one of the future albums. It'll be around for sure. Sure. Right on. Gonna be good. All right, so who did the artwork? That was our good buddy, Koki Greenway. Uh, I feel like a bad person because I don't know exactly where he's from. Uh, I know he's... I believe he's from Indonesia, but he just did amazing artwork for our buddies in, in Winnipeg called Laika. Right and he did... Yeah, yeah, we got his name from them, and... Because, I mean, we were originally thinking we were going to go to Ed Repka to do our artwork, which, I mean, obviously he's done, like, Megadeth and, yeah. you know, Municipal Waste and, like, huge bands like that. But it was, like, $2,200, and he wanted royalties off everything, and that's just way, way more money than we have. And we were we managed to meet up with Koki and found that his artwork was just amazing, and he, you know, didn't charge exorbitant amount of money yeah yeah he was he wasn't just like okay so i need all this money he was just like oh that's super cool you guys want to use my artwork right so it's definitely really cool to work with someone like that is really cool koki greenway right on yeah I, I was checking out some of his stuff on facebook and it's awesome um any music videos planned in the future and if so what song would you do hypothetically if you were to do one we've been planning one for a while uh Loosely planning it, but yeah, yeah, it'd probably be the title track off the album is what we were thinking of doing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than like uh, the fellow who did Rich O'Coin's last two videos, okay. that's who we were talking with about doing it. But I mean, at this point, again, it's, you know, money, a yeah. lot of money to put down on doing a good video. Yeah. But yeah, we'd love to do a video for it. And so, yeah, it'd probably be the title track that we'd come in with a, a video for Right on. Um, now, you mentioned about this being a different lineup from the the first album. You know, um, What do Evan and Kenny bring to the band now? Well, aside from wicked youthful energy, and I mean, I say youthful, I'm 24 years old. <laughs> yeah, you're not exactly old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, they definitely bring a super cool energy and... Uh, just a completely different energy because, I mean, they're very different people from our former members for sure. And they just bring a whole new dynamic and a new approach to everything we do. Whereas, you know, when you kind of get streamlined, it's super cool to have someone come in from out here and just totally knock everything on its ass and be like, wow, it, we never would have thought to do it that way. Right? Different perspective. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, the perspective, the shift in perspective really, really helps everything just sound better. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And Yeah, so that's definitely the, the main thing we took away from it is just a new perspective and a new energy just gives everything a wicked boost. It's awesome. Right on. Um, and you guys just got back from a tour. Uh, how far out did you go? Uh, I think the farthest west we went was uh, St. Catharines, Ontario. 
But that being said, Ontario treated us real well. They, you know, they kept they got they kept us drunk the whole time. They gave us a place to sleep. It was wicked. And then we went. We actually, unfortunately, didn't get to play any shows in Quebec, which sucked because Quebec is always awesome. Uh, but yeah, then we went back through New Brunswick. We did Fredericton. We did St. John. We did Moncton and Riverview, which were super cool. And yeah, like every time Moncton's always a wicked time. St. John was odd. Like St. John was such a cool show. We never played at this place. It's a, uh, the pub down under is yeah. the place we played. Yeah. You guys playing there with oh, yeah, DVD. Yeah. 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 Get ready for a good show and also show up early, get some food. They got good food there. Okay. Yeah. That was super cool. I'll definitely be stepping on it on my way there then, <laughs> trying to get there. Uh, who all did you play with on, on the tour? We we played with um, this wicked band in Oshawa. We played with uh, Call the Wild. They were, yeah, they were fucking amazing, dude. Um, we played in Toronto. We played with Tiger Star. We're sweet. Um... Uh, yeah, we played with uh, a band called Chainsaw, Chainsaw Lobotomy. Was that it? The Keith got that shirt. Yeah, I think it was Chainsaw Lobotomy. Rad as fuck. <laughs> it's an awesome name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were wicked, and they had shirts that on the back said "Rad as fuck." <laughs> they were wicked. Right on. Um, so, any good road stories off the tour? Uh, yeah, well, definitely. Like I said, we didn't get to play in Quebec, but. Uh, we stopped in Quebec to, you know, going from Ontario to New Brunswick, had to sleep. And we stopped in Walmart parking lots because, you know, they're amazing. And they let people sleep there with their campers and stuff. So we parked there and get the little little gas barbecue out and have some dirty dogs and some burger. Anyway, yeah, and we were, we were staying in one and uh, we were just getting hammered, drinking gin and tonics all night, throwing a football around. And our buddy Keith, who came with us on tour, decided that uh he really had to take a shit so we got footage of him taking a dump in a styrofoam cooler <laughs> which was pretty odd and then yeah we you know put the top on it and then threw it in the bushes so if you're ever in quebec city and go to a walmart and find an old styrofoam cooler it belongs to keith moore's don't open it <laughs> yeah, exactly. don't open it anybody that knows keith is not surprised by that story yeah, at exactly. all exactly. uh so how much beer was consumed because i seen like quite a few boxes on the uh ground in that picture there that uh it was only like three days in or yeah, something it got pretty bad um well and by pretty bad i mean pretty excessive yeah. Uh, but yeah no it was great i mean yeah, we ripped a couple of 45 packs when we got in the, yeah, like driving through Quebec, Beer Drinker's Paradise, or drive through, you pick up a bunch of beer, and that pretty much lasted us for most of our time through Ontario. And then coming back, we were just like, fuck it, I'm never going to drink a Budweiser again in my life. <laughs> I just would love to wake up and not have my brain taste like I was drinking Budweiser all night, yeah. which, but yeah, it, yeah. It definitely, it definitely got into the hundreds of cans for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, how would you uh, compare the metal scene out in Ontario as opposed to say like here in Halifax? Um, I'd probably say that the scene here is more hungry for it for sure. Like Toronto, it's a super cool scene, and there's so many people there, which is so wicked because everyone can show up and just do their thing. And you know, there's there's the people there that are the hardcore's into it and they're there and they're at every show and it's so good. Uh, and you know, there's obviously a higher ratio of them than there is out here. Cause there's like two and a half million people that live yeah. in the city as opposed to, you know, a hundred thousand yeah. live here. Right. But yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'd probably say that Halifax is definitely more hungry for it. Yeah. Cause when they get it, they're just like, Oh yeah wait for it it's not just like shoved down their throat the whole time you know what i mean yeah well just about everybody goes through toronto and places like that so yeah exactly we're not exactly. that lucky you know <laughs> yeah exactly like we're like oh man is this tour coming out no they're just going to montreal it's as far east as they're coming right yeah what about death angel just going as far as new brunswick and not coming here that kind of pissed me off <laughs> i'm gonna be going to moncton to see death angel like yeah. oh my god <clears throat> playing the manhattan but they're not coming to Halifax. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Though, is there's like, what venue would they play here? They're too big for Gus's. 
Too big for the seahorse. Well, I suppose... Michaels it, might hold them. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it could. But, I mean, we really don't have any great mid-size venues, you know? Yeah, we I mean? need something that can hold, like, about six to 700 people, exactly. you know? Exactly, because there's, like, the Canard Center, which is, like, you know, that's, like, 3,000 people. Yeah. Or there's Michaels, which is, like, 400 people. Like, and that'd be jammed, that'd 400 be people. Yeah, because we were all packed in there pretty good for uh, three inches of blood there on Canada yeah, Day. Yeah, for sure, you know? yeah. And that, was, that wasn't even 400 people. No. Like, for sure. All right, speaking of uh, bigger name bands come around here, you guys had the opportunity to open up for Morbid Angel at the uh, Spread the Metal Festival. Uh, how was that? That was that was super cool. I mean, uh, that whole day was just awesome. You know, we were just hanging out, drinking beers, and uh, yeah, we ended up talking with the dudes from Morbid Angel a couple uh-huh. times. They were just super down to earth just not even like you know like you, you kind of expect those guys to be like oh man we've been around since the <laughs> 80s like it's all cool but you yeah, know no they were super super cool guys just like we're down to hang out and chat with you and yeah because that was the first time they've been here wasn't it oh for sure like the yeah spread the metal flew them up for a one-off like yeah. this was a you guys aren't doing anything right now but i'll pay money for you to go on a plane and Get up here, yeah, yeah. So actually, you and Evan just played an acoustic performance for the sixth anniversary show yeah. at the Diminished Fifth. Yeah. Um, what did you play, and how rare is that for you know you guys to be doing anything acoustically in public? Oh, super rare. Well, I mean, uh, we did it once before, and that was when uh, we had just got in a car accident. Our former drummer Sylvain was laid up in the hospital with a fucking smashed up leg, which. Yeah, we we just did that to be like, listen, we're not fucking quitting. Like, this isn't the end, right? Yeah. And uh, we did this show because Josh was like, listen, I'd love to have you guys involved with it. And like I said, Kenny's gone on tour with his other band, Bloody Diamonds, right now. And, you know, I wish those guys, like, the best, like, the most fucking fun. And I hope they are just come back safe and, like, have a lot of fun. But, Josh, you know, we really, Josh wanted us to be involved. And then we really want to be involved with the six years of Diminished Fifth, so... He was like, you guys want want to do a couple acoustic tunes? We were like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. That'll be fun. So we ended up doing, we did an acoustic version of War Shark. We did a Thin Lizzy tune. We did Dance in the Moonlight, which was a lot of fun. Uh, We did... um... All a blur. (laughs) Yeah. Like I said, though, we were sitting having a couple of sodas beforehand. But yeah, we did... um... Thunderhead, which is super cool, and he did this really, really old song that didn't even make it on the first album called Or Else that we used to play all the time. Okay. Yeah, and that, we actually did that song at the first acoustic show we did like years and years ago, which is super cool. Yeah. So, so it actually gave you the opportunity to just kind of do something yeah, totally different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, there's people coming up to me after the show being like, that was hilarious. I brought my friends who I told you, told about. You know, I've been like, hey, you got to come see this band. They're playing tonight. And then you guys did an acoustic set. And it was awesome. <laughs> so we were just like, all right, cool. As long as you guys were just like, what the fuck is this? You dragged me out here to see this fucking band. I don't know if you see that. So, no, so, yeah. so is an acoustic song or something like that, maybe like even an interlude, something that might work its way into a Blackmore album at one point? It could. We just got to probably grow up a little more. So we can <laughs> right now it's just thrash as hard as you can. Yeah, exactly. We got to be able to be like, no, nah, man, let's put some some emotion into that, and it'll be good <laughs> someday. Yeah. Um. Okay. Say you're on a big tour, and like you're 
got everything that you guys can can have given to you free sandwiches and everything what's on the backstage rider for you guys Ooh, all right i would need uh you know a case of beer uh for show no doubt <laughs> oh yeah 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 that's not that's not a one night thing yeah sure. <laughs> um i don't know i'd love some the availability to have a couple cups of tea will be wicked I love lemon tea. Um, Remember, there's anything you can have. Oh, chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> would be awesome. <laughs> Some nice chicken wings and uh, pita bread and hummus would be awesome before a show. And lots of water and beer. So, yeah. All right, beer <laughs> twice. <laughs> Pretty simple rider. We're gonna, <laughs> but take all the brown label beers out of there. I don't want that. I have a feeling if we gave you like a week to think about it, a bunch of stuff would get added to that. Yeah, no, it'd be ridiculous. It'd be like, you know, I need a shark stuffed with uh, smaller sharks and uh, a monkey that has feet instead of, you know, the monkey hand feet. It would have actual hands on its feet. That'd be, see, that's why it shouldn't give us a rider, right? <laughs> That's the most stupid shit you've ever asked for. Okay, a little more serious. Um, well, uh, what's uh? <laughs> <Andy>. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Uh, best new band you've discovered lately? No, and maybe even just new to you. Maybe a band that's been around. Oh, um. I gotta say, one of my favorites going right now is uh, Speedwolf, yeah, and I showed them yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speedwolf are fucking awesome. They're, uh, yeah, it's like a faster, eviler Motorhead. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're wicked good. From I actually don't understand how they play quite that fast. They're like one of the fastest bands I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah, they're they're just I don't know. They just must have played lots of Motorhead and then been like, well, let's just play it faster, play it faster <laughs> and write our own stuff, right? But yeah, Striker is, well, I mean, I've known about them for a long time. Striker is really, really good, too. That's a band I've been listening to a lot, a lot lately. But yeah, Speed Wolf and Striker. Right on. US band. Staying true to the thrash. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I always ask like a quirky little question at the end of it, and I thought maybe a, an interesting one for you is, what's more fun, sex or music? Oh. I want to be careful, because the ladies in, in the present here. <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> No, yeah, that's oh, that's a difficult question. Depends on the day, maybe. Yeah, definitely depends on how many drinks you had that night too. Oh, hey, <laughs> I'm for the answer. <laughs> Can I always plead the fifth on this one? <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm definitely gonna say sex because why else do something if not to get sex at the end of it? That's why a lot of musicians are into it too, so. That's right. Just ask Evan. <laughs> I kind of got that vibe from Evan. He he loves the attention from the ladies, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he, he loves ladies. Yeah. But he also gets picked on cuz remember at your CD release party somebody goes, "I love you, Corey Hart." <laughs> and then stuck a straw hat on him. <laughs> yeah. And no, he's also next time you see him, he is, looks exactly like George Thorogood. He is the gear jammer. <laughs> is he going to buy like a Gretsch guitar soon or one of the Something. big Gibsons? No, I gotta get, yeah, I got to give him a Telecaster and a slide. Yeah. And then that'll set right him up. Phone, yeah. <laughs> right on. So, so uh, what's coming up? <laughs> so hard to be serious here with these musicians. Oh, it's, bad. it's bad news. Singers, they're all bad news, trust me. Um What's coming up for Blackmore? Like, what, what, uh, I know you guys got some shows coming up. Yeah, um, we're, you know, I'll say this now, we're, uh, going to Newfoundland for the first time at awesome. the end of November, which is going to be amazing. Like, nice. never been to Newfoundland before, but I mean, we've played shows in Halifax with people from Newfoundland who are here visiting. We're like, you know, you guys got to come out and play Newfoundland because they fucking love you out there. So, yeah, we're doing two nights in St. John's, Newfoundland, awesome. which is going to be wicked. And, uh, we were doing the uh, Pop Explosion with Cauldron and Diamonds is going to be here for that show, too, on October 18th. That Michaels, isn't it? Michaels, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Michaels. Every... It's a good thing one of us knows where you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you know. Pretty much either Michaels or Gus's or something. Really. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to be like, oh, what 
what's not closed down right now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's yeah, Music just, Week. You guys playing that, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, Music Week. We're doing that too. Uh, and then the day after is Blue Oyster Cult. I'm, we're not playing it, but yeah, I'm yeah. going to see Blue Oyster Cult at the Casino. Right. It's going to be amazing. I think that's November seventh. We're playing, and then the eighth is the Blue Oyster Cult show. And also, we'll have uh, an announcement probably very shortly after this is coming out that'll involve these guys. So that is going to be big. And definitely, the next time we got uh, the Metalworks has you guys playing, we're definitely going to have to try to make sure that there isn't an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting going on downstairs yeah. during the show, asking well, us to keep it down. Well, we're being like, yeah, we'd like to dedicate this song. Why don't you chill out there, bud? <laughs> what are you so mad about? <laughs> Well, I don't know, man. When you fucking oh, alcoholics anonymous, you're gonna tell us you're not supposed to drink beer up here. You decided to have your meeting on a Saturday night. Yeah, fool. <laughs> <laughs> I know where it's going with that, but yeah, that was. We got to make sure that that doesn't happen next time. Yeah, that that was kind of interesting. Uh, that uh, the the funniest part about it though was he came up and thanked me. Thanks for keeping it down. It's just like, well, just it was a long changeover between the bands. Nobody kept anything down yeah. for you. That was definitely yeah. That was definitely not. To to them, that was just, that just kind of happened for a couple of minutes where it was quiet. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, anyways, thanks for doing this, and uh, definitely pick up Blackmore's Lethal Waters album if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, Good now. And uh, for our friends out in Newfoundland, go check them out. And distortion, we're coming for you. Absolutely. So, Metalworks, Blackmore, Smitty's breakfast. <laughs> right on. Midnight warrior, the wheel of 